Welcome to Digging Deeper with Pastor Kyle, Pastor Nigel. We are back with another edition for you. Yep. This past week, we started a brand new sermon series called Jesus is Enough. We're going through the book of Colossians. So I hand it mm-hmm. to you, Kyle. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the series and how we started out. Uh, it's great, and it started out great. <laughs> That's very yeah. true. No. <laughs> yeah. That's right, we're starting Colossians. How can it go wrong? And, uh, yeah, we're done. This is a short That's video. It. <laughs> no, so Colossians, yeah, Paul, Paul obviously wrote Colossians, and uh, uh, it's good to know the, the, the purpose behind it. So the, the, the skinny of it, the quick version, is he, he wrote this letter from prison uh, in Rome. He was preaching the gospel. They didn't like it. They tried to stop it. They threw him in prison. It didn't work. Uh, so he wrote this, and he's addressing the church in Colossae who are dealing with some issues. And those issues include, essentially, it's false teachers have kind of come in and, and began to lead them astray. But the church in Colossae is, is pretty solid. They love each other. He talks about up the, up the beginning, he says, man, it's, you know, it's encouraging and I haven't stopped praying for you since I've heard of your faith and your love for one another. So they, they genuinely want to follow Jesus. They genuinely care about each other, which will take you a long way. Oh, I mean, that's good. But the problems that are happening, these false teachers that have come in, it's sort of a mix. We don't know all of it, like... Great detail, but we can tell from culture, we tell from some of the things he's talking about and history. There's sort of a mix of early Gnosticism, which the part that he's focusing on is the sense that, hey, you can you can gain spiritual enlightenment and even salvation by learning enough. Yeah, we've got these enough. secrets that we know, and if you know yeah, these, and then you're then, in the club, and, and then you get all the right stuff happening the right way. And Yeah, that still goes on now. We just don't call it that, but that people still do that now. So that's one of the things, and then... And then, of course, being uh, surrounded by Jewish culture, uh, there's there's Old Testament things that are sneaking in. This extreme Judaism, hey, you got to follow the law too. Sure, sure, Jesus is good, but you really need to follow all these laws and all these rituals yep. and all these things, and then you can accept Jesus. Uh, and here we get into that in the next couple of chapters, where Paul's like, no, 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 man, you can't. It's not what it's about. Uh, and then this sort of weird. Um, mysticism, which is which is kind of goes along with the Enlightenment Gnosticism side of it, where uh, they're worshiping angels and and they're just doing all these weird things that people are kind of throwing in there. Hey, this is spiritual. This must be good too. And, and uh, so he's he's saying, no, it's none of that. Focus on Jesus. All of what you're trying to gain, all of what you're trying to attain and get to, the spiritual understanding and depths of wisdom is found in Jesus. Jesus is enough for all of it. So that's the whole premise. So if you caught that, you you're in great shape. You're all caught up. <laughs> you're, yeah. you're in great shape. That's exactly what you need to catch yeah. there. Is Jesus is enough. You don't need to go to anything else. You don't need to find anything else because no that's place. enough. Yeah. And yet, we're going to give you some bonuses. Boom. So what we're going to go through is a little bit beyond that and through that and deeper with that idea. Mm-hmm. And so uh, one of the central things that you hit on over and over and over again which was central to the passage, is this idea that we need to surrender. And that's the beginning step. It's like, you know, if my daughter wants to become a rocket scientist, she doesn't start by designing the rocket. She needs to learn how to add and subtract and learn some math. And there's a whole process that you got to go through. That's why I'm not a rocket scientist. I haven't gotten... (laughs) I struggle with... with, I I did well with math. Yeah. And then the calculus stuff started coming. I was like, there's no way. <laughs> this is." I don't even know what calculus is. That's the end. I couldn't even tell you what it, <laughs> Good I don't, it is. Yeah, thinking back on it, I'm like, I know what geometry is. I don't remember exactly what algebra is. Yeah. We're way off track. That's okay. Anyways, point being, <laughs> if you're going to do anything spiritual, yeah. if you're going to be connecting with God at all, you have to start with surrender. You do. And so talk to us a little bit about that. And yeah. what's there in the text. And yeah, so, so in... Um, in verse 8 here, uh, he talks about the prayer. This is the prayer that he prays for them. Uh, he says, Since the day we heard, we've not ceased to pray for you. And this is the prayer, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And then the purpose, what he hopes that to accomplish is verse 10, walking the man worthy of the Lord, pleasing to him, bearing fruit. We'll get to that. Mm-hmm. But this idea of um, being filled with the knowledge of his will, so that's not just how I want to know a lot of things. That's I want to know his heart. I want to know what he wants so that I can get on board with that and, and follow him and be in, in that line. And so from that, we went to Romans 12, which we did a whole series on that before the communion series. 
uh, which, which lays out for us how can we know his will? How can we actually know that? What's the, what's the process uh, that gets you through kind of the how-to of this prayer? In Romans 12, uh, Paul says, I urge you, my brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Uh, and in, in that, then you will be able to know what his will is, his good, perfect, and pleasing will is, is how he ends that. So how do you know his will? Surrender. Yeah. Being a living sacrifice. What is a living sacrifice? Laying yourself on the altar, saying I give up the rights to myself, I give up the rights to all of it, not just some of the rights, but all of it. I belong to you. And then from there, he shapes us and molds us uh, and changes our hearts and we fall in line and know what his will is mm -hmm. and then that is conformed to our will it it sounds complicated but it's really not it's i give up i surrender i trust you i'm all in what do you want to do and then he brings it and then he brings it and then he tells you he actually gives you his will he gives you wisdom he gives you understanding he he gives you his spirit, and the spirit understands the mind of Christ already. And so the yep. spirit is giving the wisdom. It's there. The renewal of your mind is, is, a, is a bringing forth of God through you. Yeah. And so and the only way you get that is not by trying hard. It's not by studying a it's lot. It's counterintuitive. It's, yeah. not, it's not the beginning of it is this surrender towards it. And so it has to start with sacrifice. Yeah, and we get, we get hung up there. We don't like that part. And so we, we kind of started talking about <clears throat> we like to negotiate the terms of our <laughs> unconditional surrender. <laughs> right. And it doesn't work like that. Right. And so we go, okay, yeah, I see that this is what I'm supposed to do. And, and this, is, this is the life you want me to live. And I'm going to follow you. And, and you've got these things. Let me go through that and see if I agree with all of it. I need to understand it first. Yeah, before I can sign I need up to, for it. I need to know what it's going to entail. I need to know what's going to be expected of me because it's really important to me that I I meet my you know some of us yeah. are, are perfectionistic and like the goody two-shoes kids and they're like I need to do everything the right way and yeah. I need to do it right and so I need I don't to know understand those people things. but yeah that's me man that's me I'm like <laughs> I, I need to be right otherwise I don't feel good about myself yeah. and I like I'm so giving I'm, up on that I'll <laughs> go through this whole process like I need to understand it and if I'm not going to be able to to live up to it, oftentimes I don't want to even get in there because I'm going to fail and and I hate failure. I hate that feeling. And so there's this whole process that I want to go through. There. Everything's everything's checked and everything's in order so that I know I'm going to succeed. Mm -hmm. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. <laughs> That's not how this That's works. That's not how it works. Yeah. You start with surrender. You start by giving it all over. And then you get the wisdom. And then you get the understanding. Yeah, yeah we can't have... We can't have Wisdom and knowledge of his will without obedience and surrender. There is no shortcut. Yeah. So that's the yeah that's the whole tie right there and, and what the prayer is and the way through it into it and what God's doing in the midst of that. Yeah. So a question off of that: Why is he praying this prayer? What like why is he choo of all the things he could be saying right here? Why is he talking about this prayer that he's praying for them? What what does that include? No idea. No, idea. no that's, <laughs> that's not good. True. That's good. That's not true. We kind of have an idea. But that is we should yeah. surrender and maybe we, we'll get the idea. We'll get, yeah, we'll, <laughs> let's do that. Yeah, so, so why, to, to what end, yeah, right? Why, right. Is he, why does he want this to happen? Why is he giving this? One, something you mentioned is, is um, it kind of gives us insight to know that it's not automatic. He's asking for this because yeah. it's not automatic. We, we need the Lord to do it. We need the Lord to, to put the pieces in motion, and then we need to, we need to, uh, our part is to give up and surrender. We have to make the decision to do that. So, mm -hmm. so the the um, what he hopes it accomplishes is, is verse ten. Uh, so that we'll walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him. And what does that entail? Bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. So he does want you to increase in knowledge. He, he does want you to know more uh, about Him and more about His ways, more about His character, uh, more more about God's economy, and, and you can put theology into all that. It's great. It's important. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, it's valuable, and he wants us to grow in that, but not before step one. Not before that. Which, again, is the surrender. So he wants us to do these things so that we will be able to walk in a manner pleasing to him, uh, bearing spiritual fruit, which we didn't even, even get into a lot of that. 
Um, hopefully we will as, as we walk through this, but bearing spiritual fruit uh, and growing in, in knowledge. And it's not automatic. It's not automatic. And our part, again, is to, is yeah. to give up to do that. There's a lot of things in our faith that are automatic. God loves us. He created us. He designed us. He's got a destiny for us. Our salvation is set. Like, there's so many different things that are, are set in stone. But this one's not automatic. Mm -hmm. What we're doing day to day, whether we're surrendering, whether we're being faithful, or whether we're not. And so, off of that, we need this prayer to... Paul needs to be praying this prayer for them so that God is working and acting yeah. and moving them there. Yeah, and so if we, we wake up in the morning for each other. Totally. Right? If we wake up in the morning and we, do our, you know, we don't do our quiet time, are we still saved that day? Yeah, Absolutely. of course. Does God still love us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Are we going to, are we going to, and, and what I mean quiet time is like sit down and, and spend time with the Lord and ask him to, to move in us and teach us. And if we just say, I ain't doing any of that, I'm just going to jump into the day. Are we going to, are we going to be mindful of every step and like, okay, Lord, how do you want me to respond in this mm -hmm. moment? And how do you want me to, to, to be an ambassador for you here? Is that going to be automatic? Not, nope. It's no. not going to be, especially if you go like <laughs> no. years without doing it. You're I can saying, tell you it's a no. It's a big no. It's a no. It's not automatic. So, <laughs> so yeah, that this, the surrender begins right there. So anyway, so I, I cut you off there because I got excited about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the, the deal. The, it has to start with surrender, but then it moves into these other things as well, which is really, really neat. Mm -hmm. Like it's an amazing thought that we can actually please God. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, isn't that, that cool? That's amazing. Like, that's incredible. This is the God who designed us, who knows everything about us, who's way above us. Yeah. And yet, He can be pleased by us. Yeah. You'd think if I, if you knew all about me that I know, <laughs> I would think that whole pleasing God thing that ship has sailed. <laughs> the chances of that <laughs> is not good. We're past that stage. We're but that's that not stage. true. He's he yeah he works in us. And, yeah. Um, it, let me read verse 10 again. Let me just hone in on a few things. So as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. That's on the table. Yeah. yeah. To walk worthy of the Lord. To, to do that and then fully pleasing to him. It's not just a little pleasing. It's not like, right. ha, 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 that, that was mildly That'll entertaining. Do. You know? do. Yeah. That was like a little YouTube video that was kind of fun. <laughs> oh, look at what he did today. Yeah, right. Kyle's so funny today. Yeah. <laughs> look at what he did. You know, it's like, that's not what it is. It's fully pleasing to him. That's unreal. And so there's, there's a part that comes before that that tells us why that's happening. It's because we're being filled. Mm -hmm. It's when there is a surrender, then God is filling us. He's there with us, and he's filling us, and he's using our lives for his will, for his purposes, and what he wants. And that's fully pleasing to him. Yeah. And when we're surrendered to him, surrendered to him we are walking in a, word, in, a, in a manner that is worthy of him. And that's just unbelievable. I think sometimes we get into the Christian life, and when you're in it a while, sometimes it's like, all right, I got to do this, and I got to do this, and I'm, I'm paying attention to these things, and it's like, okay, don't sin here, and make sure that I'm doing my quiet time, and I'm da 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 all these things, check all the these things, right? Yeah. Check the boxes, check the boxes, check the boxes. And I forget that I'm surrendering on the front end, mm -hmm. right? But then even if I am surrendering, sometimes I'm, I'm forgetting the Lord's pleasure in it. I'm forgetting his part in the whole process and the relational side that's there with it all. Yeah. And so how amazing is it that we can please the Lord who brought us out of the domain of darkness that it says there at the end and has transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. Mm -hmm. Beautiful stuff. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's that last thing. part there ties those things together. Uh, you just mentioned verse 12, give thanks to the Father who's qualified you. It's like, yeah. Oh, wait, he's qualified me. Yeah. So me doing, this is huge, me doing these things, because we can so quickly get back into that. Okay, I'm surrendered. Got it. Now I know what he wants me to do, and I can walk in that, in that manner that's pleasing with him. So I'm doing these things. Now that I'm doing these things, because I'm doing these <laughs> things, he's happy. No, that's no. not. It's not how it happened, and that's not what qualified you. You were qualified yeah. before you were able to do those things, mm -hmm. because... Of what Christ has done, that qualified you. It's kind of that whole argument of, well, you know, can you be saved by works? You can't do works until you're saved. <laughs> so no, <laughs> you can. You can't do a God-filled work without God filling you. Nope. You can do nice things, but yep. you can do nothing of value to the kingdom in obedience to the Lord until you've 
been transferred into the kingdom and able to walk in that way. So you can't do good works until you're saved anyway. Whole other video. But then he says, uh, <laughs> he's delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, forgiveness of our sins. So, so yeah. just in case we're thinking those works have now begun to add up to give us credit or to give us, you know, standing with God. No, 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 no. It's got nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. All of our redemption is found in Jesus. And that's how we've been moved from this kingdom of darkness into this kingdom of light where we can now operate in the way we've been talking about, in yeah. surrender, in a way that's worthy of the Lord. Yeah. yeah. And then the other thing that comes off of that, as we're surrendering, we're bearing fruit, we've been transformed and we've been brought out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Mm -hmm. Then the other thing that comes out is the gospel spreads. And that, that yeah. comes up in verse 5. Yeah, yeah. It's like when you're sur surrendered and God fills your life, God sheds his gospel and it, he spreads it out and he shines it out yeah. for everybody to see. And it's inevitable. It's growing. Verse 5, it says, uh, let's see, uh, in verse 6, the, it's, it's spreading throughout the whole world. It's bearing fruit and it's increasing and it's going to continue to do yeah. that. Yeah, we're evidence of that. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, last, last little bit here. Why are we tempted to not surrender? Yeah. What gets us off track there? Like, why, why do we so often go back to trying to do it on our own, trying to be our own saviors, trying to yeah. fulfill all the things that we're supposed to do? How long can this video that? be? <laughs> <laughs> How long do you got? Yeah. Man, so we're going to spend our lives um, unpacking yeah. that and peeling back reasons because we're going to fix one and we're going to come with another one. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, in essence... Uh, we were talking a little bit about this before we started shooting the video. What what causes us to um, get off the altar? Yeah. Ultimately, I put myself on the altar, and then we get back off. Uh, it, it's different for everybody, like specifics. But I think I think the universal truth of that um, is we struggle to believe mm -hmm. that He really has qualified us. Yeah. That His blood really is enough. And we struggle to believe that, that nothing we do can add to our value in God's eyes. Because that's not how this world works. And this is where we live. And so grace is a foreign object. True grace is a foreign object. Um, I think at the heart, that's, that's a big part of it. It's huge. And so we keep on trying to go, yeah, 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 all right, I get it. But now I've got to pull my own weight. Like, I made the team... Because he's so good, but now I've got to prove to him that I belong, mm -hmm. and I've got to earn it, and and it, it, it doesn't work that way. God it? did X, Y, and Z, and now it's my job yeah. to do the rest. And yeah, grace doesn't cover <clears throat> everything you can't cover. It covers everything <laughs> because you can't cover any of it. And then surrender, and then it's just pride. Then it's just pride. Yeah, we don't want to surrender, surrender the rights to our life because we want it ourselves. I, I don't. We want control. I want, want to control. control my life. I want to control what I'm doing. I want to control even what I get yep. and my earning of it. I yep. want to earn it. I want to do these things. And sometimes it's like, dude, just stop. Let go. Yeah. God has good things for you. Right. Allow and that's, to give it that's to you. it. That, that, that I want to be in control, which, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm in that line, man. I'm in that line. Me too. But that is evidence of a lack of faith and a lack of trust that God really does know better than us. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking about this the other day. I was having a conversation with somebody. If, if you knew at the end of your life all the hardships that that you go through, that you're like, "Why, Lord, are you doing this?" You know, nah, 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 you've fallen off your throne. You know, whatever. If you fast forward to the end and you could see God's hand in all of it, no matter how hard it was, no matter how much suffering had to take place for God's glory, as He has purchased you as a at a price. If you look back on that. Would you say, yes, Lord, do whatever you want in me or not? Like, yeah, I would. Whatever the cost. Because, because he, is, he is good. He is wiser than me. His plan is the right plan. My plan is the wrong plan. <laughs> so at no point can we go, yeah, Lord, I see what you're doing there, but I have a better idea. <laughs> but it's, no. And so when we go, I want to be in control, which we all do, mm -hmm. it's rejecting that. Yep. We're, we're saying in that moment, no, 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 I think I know better. Yeah. Than you do, and of course we don't. We know that. Yeah, yeah. So if you're like, man, I know I need to do these right things. I need to get better at reading my Bible. I need to treat my wife better. I, I need know. to do what. 
the place to start is now you, you don't need more information. Yep. You don't need to go do all these different things. You need to surrender. Yeah, that's you so to, true. You need to start with that. That's where you start. But then what comes after that is God fills you, yeah. and he does all the work. He spreads the gospel. He's going to transform you. He's going to renew your mind. He's going to bear the fruit, and that's where the gospel really takes off. That's right. Ninety-nine out of 100 times, the problem isn't we don't know enough. Mm -hmm. 99 out of 100 times the problem is we don't believe and obey well, what we, we know, know. <laughs> and I, I leave that 1% just because I don't want to get an email <laughs> but it's 100% of the time <laughs> that's, that's the case yeah that's good that's good absolutely so thanks for coming guys we appreciate you guys and we pray this is a blessing to you we'll see you guys next time